Hey everyone, it's Anthony at Stop the Killer, and I'm going to show you how to play Silent Night, Deadly Night, the game. The game was intentionally designed to feel retro. Everything about the pieces, to the game board, to the rolling of the dice, and all of that stuff. We hope it invokes the 1984 feels that you love. So let's get right to it and showing you how to set the game up and play. First, decide which side of the board you want to play on. There is a naughty side of the board, which is basically just an added drinking game. And then there's the nice side, which does not have the drinking game. Put the board in the center of the table. Next, find the Billy's Path postcard and put that above the board. Next, put all the game pieces all around the board in little piles. Roadblocks, weapons, game cards, the kill spinner, officer barn, save badge, the dice, the dice shaker, the reminder card, all within easy reach for players as they play. Put the empty Iris toys bag to the side and use it for the discarded snowballs. More about the snowballs later. Next, decide on how many players are playing. Up to four people can play. Select the character you like. In this video, we'll assume four people are playing, and that means four characters all go to the orphanage space. Snowball time. Each player gets three snowballs, and they represent your lives in the game. Next, place Billy our killer Santa, on the Iris Toys space on the board. Wasn't that easy? You're almost ready to play. But first, a quick word about the weapons you're going to be using in the game. Use one less weapon than the number of players. If there are four players, use three weapons. If you're using three players, use two weapons. If there are two players, use one weapon. And if you're playing solo, of course, use one weapon. The objective of the game is to stop the killer, Billy, our killer Santa, from getting from Iris Toys to the orphanage. That's all you have to do. All players are doing exactly the same thing. It sounds pretty easy, right? Well, it's simple, but it's not necessarily easy. And three things must happen in order for you to stop Billy. First, your character must be standing on the same space as Billy, either on your turn or another player's turn. It doesn't have to be in a kill zone. It can be anywhere on the board. Two, you must have a weapon. And three, when you flick the kill spinner, the arrow must land on the section that says, you kill Billy. Alternately, you lose in one of three ways. One, if Billy kills you, you lose. Two, if you run out of snowballs, you lose. And three, everybody loses if Billy makes it to the orphanage without somebody stopping him in time. All right, let's start playing. The player who received the worst Christmas present last year goes first. That'll work. Each player starts their turn the same way. You roll all three dice, use the handy dandy dice cup because it will keep the board nice and tidy. You won't have dice flying all over the place. The red die is Billy's die and he always moves first on your turn. He can only move one or two spaces. Now, Billy follows a predefined path. That's that Billy's path postcard that we put on top of the board. His little footprints are on the board, but if the board gets a little busy with roadblocks and multiple characters and all of that, just simply reference that board and you'll easily see his trajectory. He inches his way around the board by each player moving him one or two spaces on their turn. Now the white die, the one that has the little Christmas bulbs on it, that's your die. So after you move Billy, now you move yourself. Now, unlike Billy, you do not have a predefined path on the board. You can move vertically, horizontally, anywhere you want around the board, but you cannot move diagonally. A word of advice, stay out of Billy's path at all times. Remember, if he lands on your space and you don't have a weapon, you're, you're dead and you have to leave the game. And finally, the black die determines if you draw a card or not on your turn, and this step is done last. If the black die shows a blank face, you do not draw a card. If the blank die shows a draw a card face, then you do draw a card. Now here is how you use the cards in the deck. It's very important. Do not just put the cards face down on a table and take the top card as a discard. Don't do that. You must take the cards, shuffle them, have someone else shuffle them, spread them, whatever, but you must randomly take a card out of the stack of cards every time you select a card. Okay, do what the card says and then shuffle it back into the deck. The whole key, the reason this board game works the way that it does with different endings and unpredictable outcomes is because of this deck of cards. The actions are set at different ratios in the deck. So you could be pulling the same card five or six times in one game and not pulling it in the next game. And that will give you different results every time you play. Quick tip, if you exit the game because you run out of snowballs or Billy kills you, you can be the designated card person and just make sure you're handling the cards just to help out players as they play. The game was designed so that you could quickly take it out of the box and play within five minutes. The dice and the cards tell you what to do. And so our goal was to get you set up and playing on Christmas. You don't want to spend three hours playing a game on Christmas. You want to be able to play it quickly. And so the game was designed this way to be simple setup and you're off and running.
what you'll be doing when you start the game is trying to score a weapon or the Officer Barnes save badge. It's these two spaces on the board. So when you start rolling and you start moving, try to move towards those two spaces to score a weapon or the badge. Did you land on the weapon space? Great. Roll the black die. If it rolls a blank, you score a weapon. If it doesn't roll a blank, it just means you have to come back on a subsequent turn to try to get a weapon. Did you land on the Officer Barnes save badge space? Great. Roll the black die. If it rolls blank, you get the badge. If it doesn't, you just have to come back later and try and get it. Now, there's only one save badge in the game. So try to be the person that gets it. It's a security measure. It will protect you if Billy tries to kill you on your turn. If Billy kills you, and that means the kill spinner will show Billy kills you, if you have the badge, you can block the kill, return the save badge to the side of the board, and live again for another chance to try and kill Billy. Remember, you can only have one weapon at any given time and three snowballs at any given time. Remember, there's one less weapon than the number of players playing. So if you land on the weapon space and there isn't a weapon available to win, you just kind of have to grin and bear it until a weapon is up for grabs. That means Billy can kill somebody and that weapon will go back to the pile. Now, if you have a weapon and you run out of snowballs, remember you lose if you run out of snowballs, the weapon can keep you in the game. Simply trade the weapon with somebody that has a spare snowball and that trade will allow you to stay in the game. They will now have the weapon, but you'll have a snowball to, to continue to live in the game. Now listen, you cannot take a person's last snowball because that would be naughty. Play continues like this until you have a weapon and you can land on Billy's space. If you can do that, you can go to battle. Remember, three things have to happen. You have to land on Billy's space either on your turn or another player's turn anywhere on the board. Two, you must have a weapon. And three, you have to flick that kill spinner so it lands on the you kill Billy section. If you kill Billy, everybody wins because you've stopped the killer. If Billy kills you and you don't have the save badge, you must exit the game. If the arrow lands on Billy kills you and you have the save badge, amazing, you get to live. Return the badge and the weapon back to the side of the board. You get to live another day, but you have to go get that weapon again. A word about snowballs. The snowballs represent your lives in the game, and you can only have up to three at any given time. Depending on what happens with the cards that are pulled during the game, you could be losing them slowly or quickly. If you lose a snowball, just discard it. I like to use the Iris Toys bag as a little space to put snowballs as people discard them. If you start losing snowballs, just simply replace them by landing on any one of the four snowball spaces on the board. Simply land on one of those four spaces and you'll be able to replenish a snowball unless there's a roadblock chip on that spot. A word about roadblocks. The police are looking for Billy and so they're setting up roadblocks. Roadblock chips will be appearing on the board as you play the game. There are two spaces that are immune from roadblocks, and that's the weapon space and the officer barn save badge space because those are required spaces for gameplay. But every other space on the board, including the snowball spaces, can have roadblock chips on them. If you pull a card that says place a roadblock chip, just put it right on your spot underneath your character piece. You would think roadblocks would make it difficult for Billy, but it actually helps Billy and it hurts you. Here's why. When a roadblock chip is placed on the board, it's blocking a spot, and so you can't go through it. You'll have to go around it. However, since Billy has a defined path, he can't go around it and he will skip it. This actually helps Billy get to the orphanage faster because, say for example, the red die rolls a two and there's a roadblock chip. He will skip that chip and then go two spaces, which means he'll actually be moving three spaces on that turn. For you, it's harder to get to where you want to go and it speeds up Billy's path to the orphanage. So the roadblock chips kind of favor Billy and they just make things a little more difficult for you. Let's talk kill zones. These are the amazing illustrations on the board done by Justin Osborne at Fright Rags. And the kill zones were designed to generate the tension you would feel if you were actually in a slasher movie. Some of the cards only apply if you are standing in a kill zone. So like in a horror movie, you don't know what your fate is. Hopefully this will create a little tension for you. Some of the actions will help you and some of them will hurt you. And just like being in a horror movie, you don't know your fate. You don't know if you're safe or you're vulnerable. Just roll with it literally and have fun. Let's talk about the kill spinner. Here's a tip on how to use it properly. Don't flick it when it's on the table. Pick it up and hold it so that it's being held by your fingers, by the edges, nice and tight, parallel to the floor. Then give it one hard flick with a finger from your other hand, and in a few seconds you'll find out who lives or dies in the battle of your life against Billy Chapman. Let's talk about the trivia round. The trivia round only applies if you have expansion pack two, and it gets triggered 
when Billy reaches this space on the board. So when Billy is going around the board and you haven't stopped him by the time he's reached that spot, it means he has four more spaces to go before he reaches the orphanage. That's panic time, everybody. If you have expansion pack two, you can play a trivia setback round. This happens when all players agree to do this. They stop the game and they play a trivia setback round, which if successful, you get to push Billy back six spaces on the board, which will delay his arrival to the orphanage and give you guys more time to stop the killer. To play the trivia setback round, all players have to agree to play the trivia round. Once they all agree, a trivia card is selected from the box. Look at the difficulty meter rating. In case you're playing with mom and dad who may not know the movie as well as you or diehard fans, there's something for everyone. Stop the game, peel open the sticker, read the question, and then flip the timer. If within 15 seconds, any player is able to answer that trivia question correctly, good news because you get to push Billy back six spaces on the board and that will buy you more time to stop the killer. If you fail to answer the question correctly within 15 seconds, God help Mother Superior because Billy's creeping in on that orphanage pretty quickly. So that's it. And if you're playing on the naughty side of the board, whenever somebody lands on one of those drinking spaces, everybody just yells naughty and takes a sip of their drink. Non-alcoholic is fine too. It's just a festive thing we integrated into the board to just have you have more fun. Trust me, we've tested the naughty side many times here at Stop the Killer. Store the dice inside of the dice cup inside the compartment in the box. Put all of the game pieces in the little Ira's toys bag. The bag will keep the pieces safe and you can just store them under the game board in the box. If you picked up expansion pack one that has 10 extra playing cards in it and four characters, just throw the characters in the Ira's toys bag and just store them there. Take the 10 cards, add them to the 30 cards that come in the standard deck for the standard game, and then take the card box. You can either throw it out or you can just fold that tuck box flat and store it underneath the insert within the box. If you picked up expansion pack two, store that entire box underneath the cards in this section of the box. There you have it. Be sure to play a few games back to back. You'll see that some games last five or six minutes and other games last 25 minutes. It depends on the number of people playing and the cards that are pulled. It was a pleasure designing this with Ben over at Fright Rags and Justin uh, and Joe over there. And of course, everybody at Wonder Real Entertainment, Scott J. Schneid and Dennis Whitehead. They are the co-executive producers of the original Silent Night, Deadly Night. And between all of us, we are so grateful. And on behalf of all of us to bring this game to you guys. We really hope you enjoy Silent Night, Deadly Night, the game.